Name above all names. He is worthy to be praised. Amen? Amen. 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 Well, I'm so glad that everyone's here this morning. Uh, we have we've had a, a bit of an unusual service, but uh, today, but it's been great. We've had some we've had some uh, great participation, lots of clapping and dancing, and and uh, it was it's been it's been really good. Well, for those who don't know, uh, this is actually our fifth and uh, final week of our series on stewardship and uh, we've looked at the tithe, we've looked at treasure, we've looked at talent, we've looked at uh, tending the temple and and now we're going to look at time. See, stewardship is all about being good managers, good caretakers of what we've been given. No, it's not all about money. We've talked about it and, and, and for anyone that's watching or anyone that, that you know, anyone here, you can go to YouTube, uh, youtube.com slash LHBCVA, that's Living Hope Baptist Church, Virginia. Um, and you can see uh, the discussions that we've had, the, the, the sermons that we've, we've done. Uh, so all of us know by now, if you've been here, you know by now that uh, stewardship isn't all about money. And uh, I've shared vis the vision for the church, and I plan within the next week or so, when we update the, the when we update our website, we want to um, we want to post that vision for the church as well, so that we can have it somewhere where we can go, we can look at it, we can keep it before us. And uh, so with that, I don't want to I don't want to waste any more time, if you'll pardon the pun. So speaking of time, it's time for us to rest on our feet. Let's turn in our, in our Bibles to Proverbs chapter 31. We're actually going to begin at verse uh, 10. And we're going to, we're going to go from uh, verse 10 to verse 31. So if it, this is 22 verses, this is a lot to read. So if you, if you feel the need to keep your seat, that's okay too. We know that you revere the Word of God. But it's just uh, it's a it's a tradition that we are in uh, here at Living Hope uh, that we rest on our feet. So um, let's let's read this. I'm going to be reading from uh, the New King James Version. That's the version that that uh, I've chosen to uh, preach from and do my devotionals in uh, this year. Each year I choose a new uh, a new translation, and we'll talk more about that in a bit. So here is, here is how the New King James renders Proverbs 31. Who can find a virtuous wife? For her worth is far above rubies. The heart of her husband safely trusts her, so he will have no lack of gain. She does, she does him good and not evil all the days of her life. She seeks wool and flax and willingly works with her hands. She is like the merchant ships. She brings her food from afar. She also rises while it is yet night and provides food for her household and a portion for her maidservants. She considers it, or rather, she considers a field and buys it. From her profits, she plants a vineyard. She girds herself with strength and strengthens her arms. She perceives that her merchandise is good, and her lamp does not go out by night. She stretches out her hands to the distaff, and her hand holds the spindle. She extends her hand to the poor. Yes, she reaches out her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of snow for her household, for all her household is clothed with scarlet. She makes ta ta a tapestry for herself. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sits among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them and supplies sashes for the merchants. Strength and honor are her clothing. She shall rejoice in time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom 
and her tongue is the law of kindness. She watches over the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many daughters have done well, but you excel them all. Charm is deceitful, and beauty is passing, but a woman who fears the Lord shall be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands, and let her own works praise her in the gates. Let's pray. Precious Lord God, all that we have has come from you. We say this just about every Sunday during offering time. And yet, God, let us not roughly pass over this truth. Help us to consider just how true that is. And Father, we ask that you would help us to make wise use of all that you give us. Lord, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart would be pleasing in your sight. May what we're about to say bring honor to you and glory to you and wisdom to your people. Help me to proclaim your word with boldness and clarity. In Jesus' precious holy name, amen. Amen. Please be seated in the presence of the Lord. Thank you for that. Friends. As I said, I know that's a long passage, and let's face it. <clears throat> Some might say, well, what are you... What are you preaching on the virtuous woman for? Doesn't that belong maybe more on Mother's Day? Uh, wouldn't that be something more suitable for another day? But this is what the Lord laid on my heart, and, and I had that same question. Lord, shouldn't I be, shouldn't I be pre you know, preaching on something else? Uh, but He pointed out to me some things about this passage that indeed make it germane. It, it definitely applies. And, and so I want, I want to go over that. But first, as, as always, whenever we're looking at any book of the Bible, any portion of any book of the Bible, we want to understand some things about it. We want to know who wrote it. We want to know uh, what was the situation. Uh, Proverbs is, a, is one of those books. We all know it's in the Old Testament. And, and yet, it's a book, one of those books that we always think of for wisdom, and that's good. And typically, we think, of, uh, we think of Solomon being the author of the Proverbs. And most of the Proverbs are attributed to Solomon. And I would say that, you know, if you look in the very beginning of chapter 31, you might think that, no, this isn't Solomon, because it says, in verse, 30, in verse 1 of chapter 31, it says, The words of King Lemuel, the utterance which his mother taught him. Now the first, the first nine verses here have, of, of, of this last proverb have to do with a good king. What is it a good king would be? What, what, what are the attributes of a good king? The latter portion... Of course, as we as we've looked at from verse 10 and following to the end of Proverbs, uh, we see a discussion of the virtuous wife. Here's the thing: if you look through all of the genealogies, if you look through all of the Book of Chronicles, First and Second Chronicles, all the books of First and Second Kings, you look through First and Second Samuel, you're not going to find. King Lemuel. So who is this king? God. Certainly we wouldn't think of we wouldn't think of uh, we wouldn't think of a, a, a foreign king being the subject of of the book. We wouldn't that wouldn't make sense. Some have have made that theory, have have raised that possibility, but but actually, the the Jewish old ancient Jewish tradition holds that this is actually another name for Solomon. I didn't really, I never really fully 
ascribe to that. I thought, well, maybe somewhere along the line, somebody somewhere maybe dropped poor King Lemuel out. Maybe, maybe he wasn't, maybe he didn't live up to the first nine verses. Maybe he wasn't a good king. Maybe that's why, you know, maybe somebody just took his name out and said, we're not going to talk about him. He's so bad. We're not, we're just not going to talk about him. But they talked about Ahab. They talked about, um, they talked about uh, uh, Nebat, the son of Nebat, uh, Jeroboam, son of Nebat, and all the sin that he caused the nation of Israel to do. So it doesn't seem to make any sense that they would just blot Lemuel out of the book. And with that, I had to dig a little deeper. And I found that the name Lemuel, or Lemuel, actually means belonging to God, a name that was, in fact, ascribed to Solomon. And so it is quite likely that this whole discourse from verse 31, that the, where it says, the words of King Lemuel, the utterance which his mother taught him, it very well, be, it very well could be that these are the teachings of David's later wife, Bathsheba to her son, Solomon. And indeed, we see some pretty good, pretty good evidence for that. In, in, the, in the second verse, uh, she says, What, my son, and what, son of my womb, and what, son of my vows, which very well could be her, uh, could be referring to her marriage, uh, subsequent to their sin, uh, her marriage to David, her marriage with David. And, uh, and we don't need to delve into all of that because there's plenty of material here to cover. I, I want to turn your attention, if I could, uh, again, and, and we, have some, we have some young, uh, young boys with us today in, in the house. And so I want to, I want to even, even, at their, even at their ripe old age of six years old, I want to encourage them to listen well, because uh, this, is, this is pretty important. It says, who can find a virtuous wife? Virtuous. We hear all kinds of things about what's a virtue. Uh, well, patience is a virtue. And most of us will admit that we may be lacking in that virtue a little bit. I dare say we need not pray for any more patience because we know patience comes through the testing of our faith. It comes through trouble. And so sometimes when we are, sometimes when I'm facing trouble, I just try to remember that, okay, I'm supposed to count it all joy, as James said, because the testing of my faith works patience. So maybe God is telling me I need more patience, and that's why I've got some trouble. Uh, but virtue, the virtuous wife, that means a good wife, boys. That, that, means, that means a wife who, who takes care of, of her husband, who provides for her household. And it's interesting because a lot of stereotypes uh, had developed over a lot of years that, that women were somehow less than, that, that a woman's place was somehow... Uh, barefoot and pregnant and in the kitchen. But if we look at this, the virtuous woman, the virtuous wife, is not just a homemaker. She is so much more than that. Uh, it says her worth is far above rubies. The heart of her husband safely trusts her, so he'll have no lack of gain. And and, and she does not she doesn't do him any evil she she does him good and not evil all the days of her life uh, boys you need to find a woman that is like this the, the Bible tells us that that when a man finds a wife he's found a good thing now boys don't be in too big a hurry okay you got about 19 years if if, if I have my you know it, it, if I could if I could give just that piece of advice wait until you're in your 20s to even Think about getting married. And of course, you don't want to have children or do anything that could lead to having children until you're already married. And we'll talk about the, that stuff later on at a different time. 
But I want you to know that she does him good all the time. She seeks wool and flax. These were good materials. She seeks good materials and willingly works with her hands. This is a woman who is not afraid to knit a sweater or or, or like my, my wife, she crochets and, and she can crochet some stuff and it's beautiful. And, and, and I don't want to jump too far into that, but I have to tell you, the, uh, she, she's like the merchant ship. She brings her food from afar, meaning that you don't have to see her, you don't necessarily have to see her slaving in the kitchen all the time, but she just somehow shows up, boom, here's the food. Now, in our modern times, we might think that just means she ran up to KFC. But that's not what it means. In fact, he goes on to say, she also rises while it is yet night. In other words, before the sun has come up. She's already up stirring in the kitchen and provides food for her household and a portion for her maid servants. Now, you know, let's face it, most of us, uh, well, I, I don't know about most of most of the listeners, but most of uh, all, but those who are here, present, uh, we can't afford to be paying maid servants. Uh, so, you know, they're obviously doing pretty some some. They're doing pretty well. Uh, but see, she's also a businesswoman. She's shrewd. She considers a field and buys it. She she takes the profits from it. She plants a vineyard. She, in other words, she, she makes it a business that's worthwhile. My sister is this kind of woman. She is, she is a very shrewd businesswoman. Uh, she got that sense. And, 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 and sometimes she looks at me and says, you know, hey, uh, you got to do for yourself some, you know, something, something too. And uh, I say, well, look, I didn't go into ministry uh, to, to enrich myself. But, um, but she's definitely got that piece down, and we're grateful for, for her support as well. Uh, anyway, when we, when we look at this, it says she, she girds herself with strength, and she strengthens her arms. In other words, she's not afraid to do a little heavy lifting. Uh, I can't tell you the number of times growing up that uh, my mother and I would... I, I learned to move furniture because my mother would say, hey, I want to move this over here or I need to do this, or in my, in my chores she would have me maybe move some furniture and vacuum under it and stuff. And so, it, but she wasn't afraid to pitch in and help either. And, and so it was something that, you know, I, I learned the value of working at, at an early age. We don't need to be just sitting around rot, rotting ourselves with video games, right? Amen? Yeah, you, you can't see it on the camera, but, but the, the, the boys are over here just kind of nodding like, uh-huh, I don't know what he's talking about. But, <clears throat> but when we look at it, he, he says, uh, she perceives that her merchandise is good and her lamp does not go out by night. In other words, she's, she's working into the night. She's not just, you know, okay, good, I've, I've done my bit. Now I'm going I'm, I'm to just lay around or what have you. Uh, she, and she knows that what she's doing is good. She's, she's, she's all right with that. She's confident in that. She stretches out her hands to the distaff and her, hands to the, her hand holds the spindle. In other words, even at night she's working. She may be doing, uh, she may be doing some, some uh, what is that, weaving? And, 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 and so, and, and so she, she extends her hand to the poor. She's charitable. She reaches out her hands to the needy. She's not afraid of snow for her household. Why? Well, because she clothed her, it says her household is clothed with scarlet. She's, she's made them good clothes, good, good heavy clothes. It's not that they need, she doesn't need to be worried about how cold it is because she's already provided all that they need, all the, 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 the strong, the heavy clothing that they need to survive the winters. And in and, and, and Palestine, I will tell you that in the upper altitudes, they had bitter cold. I know we don't think about the Middle East as being a place of cold, but believe it, it can be it, it, it definitely snow, and, and it can definitely be very, very cold, bitterly cold. 
but here she is. She makes a tap. She makes tapestry for herself. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. Purple. She she's dressed in expensive clothing. At that, and it doesn't say. Here's the thing, guys. It doesn't say a thing about what was her husband doing. It doesn't. It doesn't say that her husband is out there, uh, uh, you know, buying a field, planting a vineyard, uh, cooking, cleaning, making clothes, providing for the family. It says she's doing all of this. Growing up, I saw my mother do this. She had to do all for us because my my father wasn't in the picture, and that's just how it is. So indeed, I could say that my mother would be a virtuous, well, at, at the time, woman, you know, and later, uh, when when uh, my stepdad, Jim, was fortunate enough uh, to, to land her, um, now she's a virtuous wife and happily retired. And all of God's people said, Amen. 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 <laughs> and, uh, but the thing about that is, we see that she does all these things. Now it does say that her husband is known at the gates and when he sits among the elders of the land. But then it goes right back. It says, she makes linen garments and sells them and supplies sashes for the merchants. She, uh, strength and honor are her clothing. She shall rejoice in time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom. Well, folks, that tells me that she had to have been doing some studying, too. I heard somebody one time, not, not too, within the last week, uh, say that, that women weren't allowed to go and study and, and do these things. And yet, here this woman, she during, during Solomon's time, she obviously had been studying some. She had obviously been, been gleaning something, either by ear or by reading it that she had some wisdom. Obviously she had some wisdom where she couldn't have done all these other things. But when she opens her mouth, she opens her mouth with wisdom. And her tongue is the law of kindness. So not only is she wise, but she's kind. She watches over the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. She won't just sit around. You're not going to find her, you know, parked on, uh, you know, in an easy chair, uh, down in a bag of lays. She is, she is busy. She has found a way to keep herself occupied. Her children, now, wouldn't this be wonderful? Her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. Well, he should. Obviously. Many daughters have done well, but you excel them all. Charm is deceitful and beauty is passing, but a woman who fears the Lord shall be praised. Now, how could she fear the Lord? Again, unless she had been doing some studying. Unless she was a woman who maybe knew some scripture. At that time, maybe that meant she spent some time at the tabernacle of meeting or or during Solomon's, during the latter part of Solomon's time, spent some time at the temple, learning. Amen. The fact is, it says, give her the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. The thing about this is, when we look at all that this woman does, now of course this doesn't mean that this is just a one day, you know, a one day encapsulation of of all that she does, but it's obvious from this that she keeps herself occupied. She, as our scripture of meditation this week referred to, she works to redeem the time. Uh, Ephesians five, fifteen and sixteen, as as we've already read, says, "See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools." but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. And when Paul wrote that, the days were indeed evil. And I have news for you, the days are no less evil now than they were at that time. And so 
we can certainly see that we need to be doing what we can. Now, there's a lot to, there's a lot to think about that. Uh, I, I have to tell you that my wife has told me on more than one occasion that I need to learn to budget my time better. I need to learn to manage my time better. And budgeting and managing, these are stewardship terms. These, these, have, these have to do with stewardship. And she's right, I do. And so this week I decided, actually today begins a new week, so beginning with last week because I knew what I was going to be preaching on today, I said I'm going to do what I can to make the most of every minute that I have. And I have to tell you that my wife can sit and smile today, and I'm not trying to brag on myself, but she has not had to cook many meals. In fact, all she had to do was make the mashed potatoes for one thing, because if I do it, it's going to be a wreck. But I, I, I cooked the meat, and she made the mashed potatoes that night, but otherwise she hasn't had to cook this week. She hasn't had to clean dishes this week. She hasn't had to do laundry this week. And yet, I, I did all of this, try, you know, trying to lighten her burden a little bit because of her. You know, I'm proud to say that she's now engaged in in, in higher education again. She's she's uh, doing the best she can to uh, to redeem the time, if you will. She's uh, taking several classes and a few classes, and they're all reading intensive classes and and writing intensive classes, and so. I said, well, you know what, I have a lighter ministry week this week, and so I determined that I was going to do whatever I could to help her not to be so heavily burdened. And and I guess I just kind of told on myself, because she's been saying, well, you know, you're going above and beyond. But I knew what I was going to be preaching today, and I said, I've got to, I've got to make sure that I make the most of it the time. I made sure that I got up earlier than normal. I made sure that I went to bed a little earlier than normal. And I, I, you know, the old saying, early to bed, early to rise, makes a man healthy, wealthy, and wise. I don't know how true that is, but I will say this, that uh, it seemed like it was a better way of, uh, to use the time. I've been very careful, for the most part, uh, not to not to allow myself to be drawn in. And don't we do this? Sometimes we'll get drawn in. Uh, I like to watch the news. And we live in a 24-hour news cycle these days. You can go on, on the TV and, and catch news 24 hours a day. And if you allow yourself, you can wind up seeing the same breaking news for several hours. So I was, been, I've tried to be judicious in my use of time, uh, in that uh, we need to, we need to be careful what we allow ourselves to be caught up with, and and that's really something that's kind of an action point going forward is something that we need to do. We need to set aside time every day to study God's word. Yes, we have Bible study on Friday nights, and I'm grateful for that. Uh, we were going to be doing Bible studies, hopefully more frequently, with a local, uh, a local assisted living facility. And, and I'm grateful for that opportunity as well. But we need to be doing daily uh, Bible devotionals. Try to set aside time every day. Uh, Psalm 119.11 says, Thy word I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. And... And that's something that we need to do. When the enemy comes with temptation, we don't have time to say, hey, time out. I know there's a verse for this. We have to be, we have to be prepared. And if you missed the, the series on, uh, on spiritual warfare, I talked more about that then, and so check it out on YouTube. Um, but we also need to set aside time to pray. You know, Jesus twice in, in, the, in the Gospels talked about, specifically talked about how we are to pray. He said, when you pray, 
do this. And, and he, we can see that in Matthew chapter 6 and in Luke chapter 11. And those are, those are pieces where we, we see what we normally would call the Lord's Prayer. I would call it the model prayer. But throughout Jesus' ministry, we see that he takes time to pray. And likewise, we need to do the same. If you find yourself uh, feeling run down, feeling like you don't have enough time, maybe you need to give more of it to God. Uh, I, I, as I said before, stewardship isn't all about money, but I will tell you this, that when I began tithing, the, the needs that we had didn't, uh, didn't overtake us. And those times where I failed to tithe, I wound up having to borrow money or to, uh, or to do without. So uh, it seems like the more we give God of what He's given us, the more He seems to help us, or maybe the better He seems to guide us in its proper use. And then the last thing that I would say is that we need to remember that the Great Commission wasn't just given uh, to be given uh, to the disciples that were with him uh, on, in the Garden of Gethsemane, on, on the Mount of Olives. Uh, he, he told us that as we go, now I know that the, the English translation is go, go ye therefore, but it really meant as you go, as you go. You are to make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Well, that means that we should indeed set aside time to share Jesus with others. It's really not hard. All we have to do is talk, you know, in, in talking with them, we could even say something innocuous like, uh, so do you have any spiritual beliefs? Okay, if what you believed was wrong, would you want to know? Uh, there are other ways of, of breaking the ice. Uh, and, and, and we're going to be having a faith evangelism training here uh, in, the, in the Portsmouth Baptist Association next month, as a matter of fact. Uh, there's a faith evangelism training that's going to be offered at a local church. And it is my sincere prayer and desire that that everyone would be able to attend because we're even going to go out afterwards and, and put it into use. Uh, that doesn't mean that you're going to have to go and knock on somebody's door and, and say, hey, uh, what in your personal opinion does it take to get to heaven? Uh, but you may go out with a team that's going to do that so that you can see how the process is done. So indeed, set aside time to share Jesus, set aside time to pray, set aside time to study God's Word. And let me, sh let me say this, set aside time to have some fun. I know that, that oftentimes we don't like to think about that. I, I just talked about a woman who, it doesn't say she had fun, it says she did all of these things. But even Jesus took time out to go to a wedding party as we were talking about in our Bible study. And I would, I would encourage each of us that we need to take some time out just to have fun as well. Take time to pray. Take time to study God's Word. Take time to share Jesus. And yes, take, take some downtime. Let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, you are awesome. Father, words can't express how grateful we are. Lord, even now, if there is anyone either under the sound of my voice via the internet or here present, that is just not quite sure about where they stand with you. I ask that you move right now in their hearts and help them, God, to be bold enough to just say, what, 
What do I need to do to be saved? What should I do? And then God, help us to be clear enough to show them just how easy you made that possibility. How simple you made that possibility. For indeed, our walk is not necessarily easy. God, I just thank you for, for your word, the gift of your word. I praise you even now, God, for what you're doing in the lives of those who are watching or will be watching. And I just ask God that you would continue to guide our little church as we, as we seek to follow you and to seek to make you known and to know you even better. In Jesus' precious holy name we pray. Amen.